Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Basis for our meditation this morning is our gospel lesson taken from Luke chapter 20. May the words from my mouth and the meditation from our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You may remember Uncle Josiah and Aunt Gertrude. They lived in a town that was so small that Uncle Josiah was both the sheriff and the veterinarian. Well, Aunt Gert got word that they just opened a brand new four-story shopping mall in the big city. And she really wanted to see that thing. Now, Uncle Josiah, he didn't have much use for the big city. He hadn't been there since he was a kid, and he never cared to go again. He hated the big city. But he loved Aunt Gert. So he loaded her and the kids up in the pickup, and to the big city they went, straight to the shopping mall. They go inside, and Aunt Gert and the girls go off to buy dresses. Josiah and the boy said, we'll just wander around and see what's what. And so they're walking in the mall, kind of looking every which way, and all of a sudden they notice that a wall in front of them opens up, and there's a little room where the wall used to be. And a lady, older lady on a walker, walks into that little room. And then the wall closes. And Uncle Josiah and the boys are just staring at this. And they notice that there's some numbers above where their room used to be. And they're going up. Two, three, four. And then it stops. And all of a sudden it starts coming back down. Three, two, one. And the wall opens up again, and a beautiful young blonde woman <laughs> walks out of that little room. And Uncle Josiah says, if that don't beat all. <laughs> and the boys say, Dad, can we try it? And Uncle Josiah says, maybe later, right now, go get your mom. <laughs> If that don't be all. I came across a story on the internet, so it must be true. <laughs> Somebody spent $500,000 for Tom Brady's last touchdown ball. I guess he thought it was a good investment. Go up in value. And maybe you've heard Three or four hours after he bought the ball, Tom Brady came out of retirement. <laughs> I wonder if the man who bought that thought, if that don't be all. <laughs> Somebody who voted for Joe Biden hears people saying nice things about Donald Trump. And he or she says, if that don't be all. And somebody who voted for Donald Trump hears somebody saying nice things about Joe Biden. And he or she says, if that don't be all. Our text before us today is a parable that Jesus told. Now the same as Dr. Keel taught me that a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning designed to make one ponder, puzzle, think, and then by the power of the Holy Spirit working through the Word, make a decision for Jesus Christ. So let's take a few minutes and ponder, puzzle, think, and let the Holy Spirit work as we chat about this parable. A man plants 
a vineyard. And then he rents it out to some tenants who are to share in the profits with him. And he goes away to another country and is gone a long time. And it's time to get his share of the profits. So he sends a servant. And instead of giving him the owner's fair share, they beat him and send him away empty-handed. And a person might be inclined to say, if that don't beat all, but it doesn't. Because the man sends another servant and again they treat him shamefully and give him no money and send him away. And you're tempted to say if that don't beat all. But again he sends a third and him they wound and cast out. Each one they treat worse than the one before. Three of them they send away empty-handed. And we're inclined to say, if that don't be all. But nope, it doesn't. You'd think the owner would want to punish those guys at this point. But he still wants to have a relationship with them. He wants them to have a change of heart. So he says, what shall I do? And he decides, I know. I'll send my beloved son. Perhaps they'll listen to him. Now, if you've been daydreaming, I hope it was an enjoyable daydream. <laughs> But now it's time to listen up. Or as Jesus says, if you've got ears, hear. When the owner sends his beloved son after having three servants cast out, that really does beat all. Seems like a bad bet, doesn't it? Worse than buying the last touchdown football, which soon becomes just another touchdown football. What's Jesus getting at? If you know the history of Israel, you know that over the generations, God sent prophet after prophet after prophet. And some of those prophets, too many of those prophets, the people mistreated. And some of them, they killed. And from the perspective of the original hearers of this parable, the most recent one they killed was a fellow by the name of John the Baptist. Now this parable, as we ponder, puzzle, and think, it's a good thing to try to put ourselves in the sandals of some of the characters in the parable. I tried to start with the owner, but those shoes were way too big for me because those are the shoes of God our Father, huh? Now the parable, now the sandals of the servants, sometimes those fit. But unfortunately, sometimes the sandals of the tenants also fit me and maybe you. Sometimes we don't want to give God his fair share. Whether we're talking time or treasures or talents or testimony. But back to the story. The world looks at that owner sending his beloved son and the world says that's crazy. Nobody would do such of a thing. Truth is, you can't argue too much with that, can you? Would you send your beloved son after you'd sent three servants who were beaten and treated shamefully? I don't think I would. 
the only one I can think of who would, God the Father. God the Father. Because, yeah, He's crazy. He's crazy in love with you. And take that personal. He's crazy in love with each and every one of you. And He wanted a relationship with you that would last through eternity. So, He sends His Son. His only Son, His beloved Son, that He loves to save a bunch of delinquent tenants, a bunch of sinners. God sends His Son to a cross to pay for my sins and your sins and the sins of the entire world. Now that really does beat all. It beats and defeats sin it beats and defeats the power of the devil and it beats and defeats anything that would get in the way of our relationship with him and Jesus. Good news indeed. The Father sent the Son so that we could live in relationship with him in the hereafter and in the here and now. Now as I pondered and puzzled and thought about this, it dawned on me that there were basically two kinds of people who were listening to Jesus when he first told this parable. There were those who wanted a relationship with him. Maybe they didn't know how, but they, they, they wanted one. And then there were those that wanted Jesus out of the way. You heard about that toward the end of the reading of the gospel, huh? Frankly, what they wanted was they wanted Jesus dead and out of the way. And as I pondered and puzzled and thought, I like to think that some of those folks who wanted Jesus dead pondered, puzzled, and thought about this parable. And that's why Jesus talked in stories, you know, because they have a way of sticking in your head. And while they're in your head, the Holy Spirit can work, right? And so I wonder if some of those folks who wanted Jesus dead had a change of heart and came to realize, maybe years later, that God loved them enough that he sent his only begotten son for them. And I pray each and every one here knows that God sent his son for each and every one of you. Now back when the kids were little, Bubba one Saturday morning was making waffles. Bubba and the kids loved waffles. There was one problem with that, though. The waffle maker only made one waffle at a time. And you can see where this is going, right? <laughs> now, Bubba is a big kid, but he's mature enough to wait his turn. But Billy Bob and Bobby Sue, not so much. Here's how it went. I want the first waffle. No, I want the... You had the first... No, you had the first waffle last time. You guys have lived this, I bet, haven't you? <laughs> anyway, Bubba said, Hey, guys, your mom's doing a nice thing for us. Let's not ruin it. You know, Jesus would let someone else have the first waffle. And Billy Bob says, Bobby Sue... You get to be Jesus this morning. <laughs> and Bubba said, if that don't beat all. <laughs> now there's only one Jesus, but his spirit lives in each and every one of you. And because it does, your hands become extensions of Jesus' hands. Your lips become extensions of Jesus' lips. And your feet become extensions of Jesus' feet. He doesn't want you out of the way. He wants you on mission with Him. 
And as we grow in our ability to see the world more like Jesus sees the world and then react to the world more like Jesus would react to the world and we come to realize that he is using us to lead people off the path to hell and place them on the path to heaven, there's a good chance we might just be inclined to say, if that don't be all, in his living, loving name, amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in the true faith unto life everlasting, amen. As a result of what we have heard, what is God asking us to believe or do in the coming weeks, especially for the good of others?